Good morning, middle one. Today we are going to talk. Today we are going to talk about unit three, uh, lesson one, which is talking about living organisms, diversity, and principles of their classification. First, we are going to talk uh, about some important definition, okay? And we are gonna talk about them later, in details. But first, you have to know some important definitions. Uh, in the first part. We have something called microorganisms. What's mean by microorganisms? They are living organisms which can't be seen by the naked eye. You can see them. And they are found everywhere in air, in water, in soil. Uh, we have an experiment. Uh, when you try to take a drop of water from a pond, okay, and put this drop of water under the microscope, you will watch out the microorganisms under the microscope like uh, Paramecium and like uh, Eugolina and Amoeba. They are living organisms that can't be seen by the naked eye like Paramecium, Eugolina and uh, Amoeba. Okay? Next, we have uh, some uh, important definition like ferns. What's mean by ferns? They are small terrestrial plants. Terrestrial mean earth that uh, live on earth. They are short plants uh, that found on the earth. Uh, and we are going to talk about it later. We have some thing called gymnosperms. Gymnosperms, they are plants. They are plants that their seeds are formed inside the cone, not inside the flower, not inside the pericarp. Angiosperm, they are plants that the seeds are formed inside the berry carb or in the uh, flower itself. Uh, we have animals that have uh, soft bodies. Uh, soft bodies mean that they have no support, no vertebral column, no backbone. We have something called arthropods. Arthropods, they are invertebrate animals, animals that uh, don't have uh, a vertebral column that are characterized by presence of jointed legs. The arthropods, they are uh, animals that have jointed legs. We have edentates. Edentates, they are toothless mammals uh, or uh, animals that uh, don't have teeth. Uh, we have something called uh, uh, rodents. Rodents, they, have, uh, they are animals that have uh, one pair of incisor in each jaw. Uh, uh, we have lagomorphs. Lagomorphs, they are uh, animals that's characterized by two pairs of incisors in upper jaw and one pair of incisor in lower jaw. We have something called taxonomy. Taxonomy, what's mean by taxonomy? Like we uh, talked about it later, we talked about it before. It is a branch of biology that serves for the similarities and differences among the living organisms to put the similar one in groups to easy their study. Okay? So the branch of biology is a taxonomy. We have something called species. Species is a group of living organisms which are similar in shape that can reproduce to give a new fertile individual to keep their existence. So species, they are a group of living organisms. Uh, uh, there is an important question here, how to sim uh, simplify uh, or you can classify the animal. We can classify animal according to the shape or you can classify about the way of fitting or the size. So uh, according to this size, we have big animals like elephant or rhinoceros. We have small animal like rat, rabbit, lizard. Or we can classify the animal according to the environment which these animals live. We have animals live in water like fish, crocodile, and hippopotami. We have animals live on land like horse, lion, dog. And now we need to classify uh, the plants. We can classify the plants according to the size or the size of the leaves itself. We can classify according to the size of the plant. We have huge trees like camphor or balm trees. We have short weeds, short weeds, short plants like clover and gargir. We can classify the plant according to the size of the leaf. We have plants that carry large sized leaves like banana plants. Uh, banana plants is a plant that carry a large sized leaf. 
uh, or we have plants that carry small size leaves like Molochia. Uh, now we can classify the plant according to uh, the external shape. Uh, we have plants, uh, you mainly know basically that the plant consists of root stem leaves. But not all the plants, we have plants that can be distinguished into root stem leaves like uh, all algae, algae, like green, red, brown algae. But the other or the most of the plant are distinguished have uh, uh, root stem leaves like wheat, corn, balm can come for plants. Or we can classify the plants according to the way of reproduction. You know that the plants are living organisms so they can reproduce. Okay, so not all the plants can reproduce by the same way. So we classify them into two categories. We have the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. What's mean by gymnosperm and angiosperm? Gymnosperm like uh, the bind and cecus plant. Bind and cecus plant, they are plants that, uh, uh, that uh, are from the gymnosperm they can form seed they can form a seed inside the cone itself we have the angiosperm angiosperm we have two types of them uh, monocotyledon like corn and wheat plant what's mean by uh, monocotyledon plant it is a plant that form seed the seed in the flower itself like the corn and wheat and it's a uh, one part only so it's called the monocotyledon or dicotyledon plant like bean plant and pea plant uh, like when you uh, hold a one p one p seed you can divide uh, it by your hand into two parts so it's called dicotyledon plants here we need to classify the animals according to the nature of body supporting we have animals that have soft bodies like jellyfish, octopus and worms we have uh, animals uh, with supported body whether this support is external or internal if we talk about the animals that have external support we will find that we have shrimp, water snail and mussels or if you we talk about the animals that have internal support we will find the vertebrates like fish, reptiles, birds and mammals now we need to classify classify the animal into the number of leg or the arthropods classification of arthropods what's mean by uh, arthropods arthropods that uh, uh, refer to the number of legs the number of legs in animals we have the arthropods that have three pairs of jointed legs like the insects all the insects have three pairs of jointed legs like and and locust bees, flies and cockroach. We have arthropods here that have four pairs of jointed legs uh, like the arachnids. What mean by arachnids? They are insects that have four pairs of jointed legs like spider and scorpions. Now we here have arthropods. They have numerous legs m so they call the myrobods. Myrobods uh, known or means that they are insects that have many many numerous legs you can't count them you can't count them like Scolobendra and uh, Julius okay now we need to classify the mammals the mammals as a cate category of the animal according to the kind and the number of teeth into edentates edentates mammals having teeth okay if we first talk about edentates what mean by edentates the teethless mammals the mammals that doesn't have teeth like sloth and armadillo they are animals that doesn't have teeth now we will talk about the mammals that having teeth they are divided according to the shape and kind of teeth into we have animals have front teeth extending outward to capture the insects okay we have animal have front teeth extending outward to capture the insects like hedgehog okay or we have animals 
have pointed canines, sharp canines and molars that, uh, that uh, outward find outward to capture the insect like all carnivores like lion tigers, lion tiger have sharp canines and molar to capture uh, the prey or we have animals having sharp incisors they are divided according to the number of incisors in each jaw we have animals have sharp incisor but they are divided according to number of these incisors we had a zero dense rodents like rat and gerboa and a uh, squirrel they have one bear a uh, one bear of incisor in each jaw in upper jaw and lower jaw or we have the lagomorphous lagomorphous are uh, animals that have two pairs of incisor in upper jaw and one pair of incisor in the lower jaw like rabbits okay uh, here we have an uh, experiment that prove if we uh, take a drop of water from a bond water on the ground and put it under the microscope we will find that we have many microorganisms like amoeba or diogolina and paramecium so the uh, microorganisms can't be seen under the microscope okay now we are going to talk about the lesson two of unit three which is talking about the adaptation and diversity of the living organism here we have some important definition uh, which is started by adaptation adaptation and its kinds now you have to know for that adaptation it is the change of the living organism behavior or the body structure or the organ biological function so the adaptation may be fo may be found in the in the body itself in the structure of it or in uh, its function which is performed by the organ or in its behavior so we have three type of adaptation here structural adaptation which is adaptation that study the structure of one body adaptation and structure so it will be structural adaptation function adaptation it's an adaptation of some organ and tissue to do a specific function so it is adaptation or modification that found in the tissue or the organ itself to do a specific function and finally we have the behavioral adaptation which is adaptation in the activity of some animals in different time of the day and night so it is a behavior adaptation we have something called British plants or insect bores. they are plants they are self feeding green plants that can't uh, can't make photosynthesis process so they uh, make another way to find their food by capturing the insects inside them okay uh, we have uh, some important examples on the insectivores uh, plants like uh, Dionia or Drosera or Halophila. They are plants that belong to uh, insectivorous plants. Okay. First, we will talk about the structural adaptation. What's mean by a structural adaptation? We said that structural adaptation is a modification that happen in the structure like uh, in the horse in the horse hoof yes uh, where the horse uh, uh, end with a strong strong sharp leg and the camel bed in the end in thick uh, thick bed so it's a structural adaptation changing in the structure or when when we talk about the functional adaptation uh, like in all human in the high temperature in summer when you secrete bison this is a, a functional adaptation secreting bison by your skin or secreting bison uh, secreting sweat in human in high temperature or secreting bison in snakes uh, which is a functional adaptation now we need to know uh, why why some animals make adaptation why for getting food or escaping from animals in dangerous situations uh, we have here some examples on the modifications that happen in mammals for example like whale whale the whale 
have a modification in its limbs its limbs its m its limbs mean it means in its hands the whale the whale doesn't have doesn't have hand but the, the its limbs are modified into battle are modified into battle the whale doesn't have hand but it has battle the hand are modified into battle why to make swimming in the water to make swimming and its structural adaptation the bat the bat doesn't have hand but the hand are modified into wings why to make or to perform flying which is a structural adaptation the horse the horse its limb or its leg end end with a strong hoof why to walk and run on the rocky soil which is structural adaptation monkey and gorilla monkey and gorilla they have long uh, elongated or long hands why to be able to climb trees and catch things which is structural adaptation too uh, we have here adaptation in birds first we will talk about the birds like hawk and vultures okay the predatory birds first we will talk about the beaks the beaks of the hawk and vulture they have strong and sharp beaks why to catch uh, the prey so it is a structural adaptation the bird uh, the hawks and vulture uh, it doesn't have mouth but they have uh, uh, the mouth is modified into a uh, strong and sharp beaks and if we talk about their legs so they have four fingers four fingers ending is a s uh, end with a strong and sharp claws three of these fingers are uh, interior or uh, at the front and one finger at the back okay so it's a structural adaptation too <coughs> here we will talk about the birds which feed on uh, worms the shallow water worms like uh, iron and hopi like uh, they don't have mouth but they have beaks they have long thin beaks why to back up worms uh, in and snails that in water which is structural adaptation they have uh, a long and thin legs to help them to walk in the water okay and when we talk about the birds which feed on mosses and fish uh, like ducks and geese they have wide wide beaks why to help them to filter uh, the food from the water and their leg all balm balm to help them in swimming which is structural adaptation too here we have some examples on the self-feeding green plants which are the insectivores or the british plants like the dionia drosera or halophila uh, take care uh, there is an important part that found in lesson 2 in unit 3 you have to add it in the booklet okay uh, we have some important definitions okay so start to add them in your booklet in the last page of unit 3 lesson 2 okay first we are going to talk about something called hibernation what's mean by hibernation it's an uh, it's an activity or behavior that some animals stop stop their activities in low temperature in winter some animals in winter hide themselves so they can't make any activity like uh, many reptiles insects and frog from amphibia okay in the opposite we have something called estivation what's mean by estivation it is a behavior but not found in winter it's found in summer there are some animals in high temperature okay in hot weather can't make any activity so they make estivation or hide themselves like their boa desert snail and insects we have again something called bird migration what's mean by bird migration it's inherited behavior 
that come from their parents, inherited behavior in some species of bird, when they, where they migrate from cold parts or cold regions to warmer regions for reproduction. The bird always migrate from the cold regions to the warmer region for reproduction like quiet bird. Some, uh, we have some insects or some animals, uh, they hide themselves, hide themselves from enemy by changing its color, so they make something called camouflage. What's mean by camouflage? It is the ability of the living organism to be hidden from the enemies, like the leaf insects. It's an insect that uh, uh, stand on uh, the leaf, so it looks like the leaf itself. So the enemy can't differentiate between the leaf insect and the leaf itself. And the stick insect, it's an insect that uh, walk on the uh, stick of the of the plant. So it looks like the stick itself. So it's an example for camouflage. And finally, we have the chameleon. Chameleon, uh, it's make camouflage so it can hide from the enemies. Okay, don't forget to add this part in the last page of Unit 3, Lesson 2. Okay, thank you.